Happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. And uh, welcome to the Back Catalog Listening Party, the 200th episode. My name is Mother Banja, one of your hosts. My name is Anthony Erig, the other host. And today we have joining us from, actually, I don't know where you're joining us from today. Uh, Richard Schindel, uh, where are you joining us from today? I am joining you today from Beacon, New York. Ah, excellent. All right. You got to introduce him again now, Ellen, though, because we did not applaud yet. Oh, uh, we want to welcome Richard from... Schindel to the show from Beacon, New York. <laughs> there we go. 200 Proper episodes. We got this down. <laughs> We're such pros. We are complete professionals. <laughs> uh, well, we are so happy that you all are joining us for this uh, 200th episode. Uh, Connie joining us from Richfield. Um, Adam from the Oregon coast. Uh, Michael from Hampshire, UK. And we have another person joining us from the UK, one of our back catalog regulars, uh, Matt Winters, joining us from Birmingham uh, today. And uh, we have Lila and Peter from New Hampshire. Um, uh, Lila's joining us from Massachusetts. Uh, Karen from Ohio. Chris from Savage, Minnesota. Uh, he says, done working. Now time for a beer and a great happy hour. Um, yes. Yes. Well, I hear that. And you know what? Because it's our 200th episode, I'm getting fancy. Not only am I wearing a dress, not that you can see it really on this um, uh, in this shot, but I also uh, Whoa. have some bubbly for the day. That uh, is fancy. Yeah, no box wine today. This is the, the, <laughs> the fancy stuff. So um, I got special carrot juice. Well, oh, yes. <laughs> there's nothing better than special carrot juice. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, Tony, are you enjoying anything special? I, see I you're am. I'm enjoying a hazy little hat. thing IPA yeah. in oh, my uh, back catalog listening party pint glass oh, um, right. the, uh, that uh, that we had made up this year. And if you're new um, to the show, welcome to the back catalog listening party. Uh, this is our weekly musical happy hour where we meet every Friday at 4 p.m. Central Time to uh, hang out with really great musicians and our favorite artists and listen to their albums and geek out about recording and songwriting and uh, all of the things that go into putting together a collection of songs. And I see a lot of new faces out there in the chat. We want to welcome you. Um, and uh, yeah, I think you're about to do this, Ellen. But cheers to all of you out there. Here's to the end of the week, the beginning of the next uh, weekend and to Richard Chandel and all of the wonderful music that we're going to hear today. That's right. And also a special shout out to Paviel French, uh, who was a recent guest here on the Back Catalog listening party. So hi, Paviel. Yeah, all right. Thanks for the congratulations. And we are so excited uh, for um, today's show. Um, Partly because uh, Richard Schindel has been one of the songwriters that's been on my bucket list. And so it finally worked out for him to be on the show. And uh, Richard, for folks who are maybe less familiar with your music, maybe you can give the, the two minute origin story of, you know, like where you grew up, how you fell into making music and where this record fits in your discography. Whoa. Big it's question. a lot. I know. Two, two minutes. Okay. We're going to time you. No, just I'm going to do it. Here we, here we go. Uh, <laughs> I'm from uh, Long Island, New York. Um, uh, my dad had a guitar uh, when when I was eight, and I thought it was really cool, and he couldn't really play it at all. But I uh, grabbed it and started playing it, and then, um, and then I fell into uh, Graham Parsons and uh, bluegrass and uh, uh, and Dylan mostly, and I was uh, completely bewitched by by the early Dylan um, and the late Dylan and the middle Dylan um, and the, the current Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> All the Dylans. Shall, Shall I go on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I was completely bewitched at the age of eight or nine by the freewheeling Bob Dylan, and I had to figure out how he got that sound out of a guitar. And it was really his guitar playing uh, that, I mean, his songs too, but I was really just transfixed by the guitar playing. And um, I figured out that it was... Uh, a guitar that my parents would never buy me. But um, anyway, so I wrote my, wrote my first song at the age of 27, um, fairly late. Um, so I was just a guy who listened to music and a guy who did covers. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, not in any professional way. And wrote my first song at 27 and never looked back. 
Um, uh, it kept me from going to law school. <laughs> That's that song. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? It's not. I'm not kidding. That song kept me from going to law school. Um, I now live in Buenos Aires, Argentina. I've been there for almost 25 years. Um, I took a break from touring. I took a well. I, I left touring, um, but now I'm kind of I'm kind of feeling like maybe I should I should get back into it a little bit to some degree. To some degree. I'm not sure to what degree, but to some degree. Um, so is that, have I hit the two minute mark yet or shall I keep going? I think, no, I think you're good. And I, and yeah, maybe where this album that we're going to revisit today, which is a oh, right, later right. record where that kind of fits in. Well, when I was uh, just before I went off the road, I was kind of bugged by my own music, my own writing. I was just, I was in a rut. I felt like it's not that I didn't like, you know, my previous records or anything I did, but in, 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 in the current batch was, um, was was bothering me a little bit. I don't know something about the way I was writing and and for this record, I wanted to for the one we're going to listen to today. I I wanted to really um, focus on the, on on the music, on the musicians, on 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 my playing other things besides a, a, an acoustic guitar. Not that there's anything wrong with that, um, and just to really uh, go wild. Kind of lose my mind with 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 the, the musicians in the room. Let them do what they do. Um, let things happen. Uh, let go of the control of the process of recording a little bit. Um, hmm. And uh, it may not sound like that because it ended up sounding like a very careful, pretty tidy record recording wise. Um, I don't mean in a bad way, but it just it it doesn't sound like whatever. It's not you know it's it's it. But my own attitude towards it as I was recording it was was not like previous records. I was a bit more um, willing to entertain uh, other ideas musically. Interesting. Uh, well, I can't wait to dig into it. But before we do, we got two people asked the same question. So I oh. want to make sure we don't lose that thread. Uh, both Karen and Peter asked... What was that first song you wrote at age 27? Are you happy now? Ah, oh. which which is on a which is on a record um, for if for any of you uh, keeping track, that's from uh, Sparrow's Point, I believe, right? Yep. Um, so, um, which is also a testament too that even even if you came into songwriting late, um, you uh, you went out with guns blazing because that's a song I think that you still perform live. So it's not like one of those embarrassing ones where you're like, oh, I'm, I don't want to play that first song. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not allowed not to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Lila says, are you happy now? Makes us laugh every time we hear it. And it's Good. one of the few songs mentioning uh, Halloween. So if you're looking for um, a Halloween playlist, um, uh, a breakup song taking place at Halloween, very specific kind of uh, niche, um, <laughs> then you can check that out. It's definitely a niche song. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let's jump into the music. Um, so Great. the first track that you picked to feature, again, this name of this record is, is uh, Careless. And um, it came out in 2016. And I think that's the most recent. Um, and uh, this is the first track that you picked to feature from it, The Deer on the Parkway. Is there anything you want to say about the song before we take a listen? Uh, the Parkway is actually the Sawmill River Parkway in New York State. And um, and it, the song started off um, as I was loading into the Doubletree in Tarrytown, New York. As I was opening the door, the thought came to me, the deer on the parkway graze right to the edge just as a phrase. And I had to actually put down all my stuff, take out my phone, record it into the voice thing, because I thought it was a, a good sentence. So. Excellent. All right, well, let's give it a listen. Uh, this is Richard Sh Shindell with the deer on the parkway here on the Bat Catalog Listening Party. <laughs> from the trees 
Kinships and cells, sixes and threes Following true to the call they obey By the light of the moon, each blade of the way Ago, they roamed the king's wood. Though he would hunt them, they considered him good. He got royal arrow, a small price to pay for keeping the poachers and freedom at bay. The deer on the parkway graze right. Let me pass by Okay, we think that's actually the ending right now. Uh, I know there's a there's a false ending earlier, but uh, Richard Schindel with The Deer on the Parkway from his 2016 album, Careless, which we are revisiting today with Richard joining us today from Beacon, New York, and all of you joining us from all over the place and the questions and the comments uh, flying in. And uh, what a cool tune you were talking about how this album was... Uh, made with a little more like abandon or maybe with like less of a plan going into the studio to say, I love the 
the how the song it feels like it was built <laughs> You yeah, know, I, was, I had the same thought. It felt like you must have like arranged this so tightly. There's these rhythmic so changes yeah. that everybody was just locked in. Was this just like you letting everyone dictate how it turned out in the studio? Well, um, as I remember, there was a previous version, which was kind of a ripoff of uh, it was a chord progression, which was a ripoff of um, not a ripoff, but it was heavily influenced by a song um called Kennedy IO uh the definitive version of which is done by Nick Jones um many people have done it uh it's a traditional tune and I I made this I wrote the lyrics to the song and as as you heard them and then I I as happens a lot I write music when I have lyrics first I write music to go with the lyrics and the music that goes with the lyrics isn't good it's just it's just not it's just not interesting and it really bothers me and then i have to wait around until something better comes along and that's what happened with this one i had a whole mm. musical thing that happened but it was utterly pedestrian let me assure you and um i had to wait till the new thing came and it did while we were on the stu in the studio and if i remember correctly that was a that was a live take um mm. in terms of of drums bass and my guitar which is a, uh, a an early '60s Dan Electro convertible um, through through a through a Princeton reverb, and um, and the drummer, who I believe is Dennis McDermott from Listening, but I'm not sure, and the bass player um, who uh, is Lincoln Schleifer, I think we just laid down the the, the basic tracks um, live, and the, the 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 other stuff, the development of the song. Which didn't, which did involve some cutting and pasting. I have to admit, specifically the the um, that the the coda, the coda was cut and paste from the solo, and then mm -hmm. arranged to be uh, you what you sounded like a false ending there. We actually did it. There was a false ending. Uh, there was an ending. There was a real ending. True ending. <laughs> it ended. It was over. <laughs> But we couldn't leave well enough alone, and we uh, we we took a little bit of that uh, solo section and added it to the end, and that solo section is is me playing a clavinet, a real clavinet through a through some kind of an amp, um, a a mandola through some kind of an amp, hmm. and an electric guitar with uh, a couple of humbuckers in it. Nice, cool. Yeah. Um, uh, Clifford Carter is playing keys. He's a uh, great, great piano player, a great keyboard player. He's playing. Um, uh, that's the reason that the, the clavinet was out, because, uh, you know, we thought maybe Clifford would do something with that. But I think he's playing the piano and the B3. Yeah, lots nice. of cool layers uh, to that yeah. song. And it feels like mm -hmm. each one kind of has its its moment and really adds to uh, sort of the the drama of the song. And um, thanks. Tango had a question. Did you start off as a finger picker or as a flat picker? Interesting question. Um, because I started off as both. Hmm. Um, I, well, well, actually, no. I think I, I learned how to flat pick from a guy named Joe Ginelli at a music store. It was. It, where I took lessons every Wednesday between the ages of like 12 and 15. And he was, he was an old jazz guy in New York, played with Tommy Mottola, played really played an old uh, Gibson 175. He was the real deal. And he taught me proper, proper pick technique. And uh, he was, I remember every time I, every time I do something right, he would like grab me by the, the he put his claws because he had these claws, you know, because he didn't use a pick. He used claws. <laughs> he'd put his hand into my, like on my knee and he'd say, Richard, Richard, someday you're going to be a crackerjack guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I was in pain. But so and to answer the question, I learned how to do that from Joe Ginelli, alternate, alternating picking. And then I learned, um, and then I started listening to John Fahey and uh, Mississippi John Hurt, mm. and um, 
uh, a lot of people. And at the same time, I was listening to Norman Blake and Doc Watson and Tony Rice. And so there was always this mixture of, of finger picking and flat picking. Eventually, I ended up flat picking more because I just couldn't maintain my nails. And so I learned how to how to do a thing with I, I learned how to cross pick in a way that sounds like finger picking. I'm not a great, you know, I mean, Molly Tuttle could run circles around me any day of the week. I'm, I'm, I'm a songwriter who accompanied him, who accompanies himself adequately, but that's about it. Um, but that's the answer to your question. Um, well, uh, we also have, um, some, well, I had a question, um, uh, and someone else had some question about themes uh, in your songwriting. And uh, The Deer in the Parkway, as I was listening, I know we had mentioned your album Sparrow's Point earlier. I was just realizing that there's there's at least one other song I can think of by now that mentions a deer on the side of the road. Um, and uh, Oh, yeah, that creepy song. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and then uh, and then someone else was asking about the courier. Uh, Tango was asking about um, what the song, the courier, a common thread of songs about conflict. You stay here. The things that I've seen. Um, so are is like, do you think about that when you're writing a new song or is every song its own song? Or do you think um, like, do you spend times with topics like for a period of time? It's a good question. Uh, no, I don't. Every song is its own thing. Every song starts off the way I just described the beginning of The Deer on the Parkway. Um, in that case, it was a sentence. The deer on the parkway grazed right to the edge. I have no idea what that means, where that's going. I'm not, it's not like I'm trying to say something like, oh, there's this, there's this thing I want to say about deer. No, no. It's just, <laughs> it's just a sentence. And then, and then, you know, God willing, there's a second sentence and a third <laughs> and a fourth. <laughs> and then praise be a fifth. <laughs> well, maybe to circle back on the uh, this idea of the how the song had ended once and then ended again, clearly there was some, you know, you were thinking about how this was presented then. You had your sentences, oh, yeah. you had your guitar licks. Um, can you talk talk a little bit about that, like uh, your like your approach to arranging songs? That's, I'm always fascinated. There's so many different ways you can tell a story, and um, how involved are you in that process? Were you sitting in the studio saying, "No, no, no, we got to end. It's not quite there." Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. I was in the studio with my co-producer Greg Anderson and the engineer Scott Petito, who's uh, who many times was acting, you know, very much like a producer. And he is a very good producer himself. Um, and I'm always happy to hear what people have to say. Um, I'm always happy to hear what musicians have to say. I'm not one of these people who goes in with an arrangement uh, in his head and wants it fleshed out. And it has to be done that way. On the contrary, um, I want to hear what people think. On the other hand, once I start playing or singing, I'm going to there's going to be a sound that I'm after. Hmm. I, I don't know how to um, describe it, except that um, there's just a, there's just a, a quality, a sonic quality or a, a, a timbre. Um, like for example, the, for example, that the, the, that timbre of those three instruments in the solo of the deer in the parkway, that's just me trying to, to satisfy like some sort of timbre I hear in my ear in the moment. Hmm. You know, I hear the instruments, I hear that bazooka, uh, the mandola, I hear that electric guitar and I hear that clavinet. And I think to myself, Oh man, there is some, there is some serious juju happening hmm. with these things. And I have to figure out how to, so then it really just becomes a question of, of using my ears of my, my, my musical ear. Um, and and it's, so it's not a premeditated thing. It's it's really a, a question of 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 satisfying something that I can almost hear in my head, but I can't really hear it until I actually do it. Interesting. Does that make sense? Cool. Yeah, yeah, it totally does. Yeah, there's so many different ways to approach that, but that I I think in your, your case it it it. it like the the thread gets is is getting pulled, <laughs> and it it unravels uh, the 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 end product at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and 
uh, Marion saying, very cool to hear about these early aspects of your evolution as a musician and a recording musician. Uh, we got a few other questions. Uh, well, Jay Rosen wanted us to ask about uh, uh, Jack Hardy's songwriter showcase. Oh, yeah. um, of course, uh, well, I'll let you talk about who Jack Hardy is. He was a definite character in the New York City folk scene. Oh, he was a he was an, import <laughs> an important character. He was um, Jack Hardy was a great songwriter. He made many many records. Um, he was a kind of bard and he was also an extremely generous man who uh helped along many many songwriters um every thursday in his apartment in uh soho he had a songwriter uh, songwriters in the round thing um and it was a tiny apartment it was it was it was really small like we could barely fit in there and people would come in with new songs and they would come in with songs that were still in process. And we would all listen respectfully. And and then we would criticize in, in respectfully. And Jack's, uh, Jack's word meant a lot, but it wasn't the only word. Um, there's a lot of really wonderful musicians and uh, uh, songwriters who went through there. Um, uh, Richard Julian, um, uh, John Gorka, uh, Suzanne Vega, uh, many other people. And it was like a community. I mean, it was a community. Um, David Messengill is another one. Um, it, it was a, it was a, an important community. And I went down there with the second song I had ever written. <laughs> Scared to death. And Which was? On a Sea of Fleur de Lis. Ah, yeah. And I went down there and um, and I played it. And I guess it went pretty well. And um, and from then on, I had this this reference point, this this community of people. And I didn't go every week, but I went fairly regularly for a couple of years, I think. And, you know, sometimes I would play something and sometimes I just went to listen. Um, and it was really important. And Jack was extremely you know the, the more i think about it the more i am amazed by how how generous he was with his time and with his 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 talent and um his house his apartment and uh, i highly recommend you go and um and check out some of his records uh the 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 nameless one i guess it is 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 the record is called the nameless one is 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 my favorite of his and he had an influence on me at the beginning um and he was such a character <laughs> <laughs> such a character <laughs> for sure um and we have so many questions to get to but but and i'm keeping track of them but uh i think we need to hear more music because uh folks are itching to hear more as am I. And um, if you just joined us for the back catalog listening party, this is the show where we invite artists uh, to revisit one of their old records. So uh, Richard Schindel is joining us and has picked his 2016 release, Careless. So we're going to be hearing more tracks from that and talking about them. But we will, again, address any, any questions you have or comments uh, that you have, even if it doesn't pertain uh, to this record. So keep them coming. Uh, this next track that you picked, Richard, is all wide open. Is there anything you want to say about this before we take a listen? Uh, another case of a song that had a completely different musical setting, and then it finally found it's um, a happier musical setting, although it's not a happy song. Um, I will say it's a song about addiction. Um, uh, in the song, it's not clear how it gets resolved or if it gets resolved that situation, but I will say now that it resolved itself, this situation, which was a true story, uh, in the most beautiful way. So it, it has a happy ending, but the happy ending didn't make it into the song. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's give it a listen. Richard Schindel, all wide open here on the Back Catalog Listening Party.
She showed up on the doorstep out of nowhere All wrapped up in a goodwill overcoat She was shaking with her arms drawn tight around her She said, Daddy, I've been clean almost a month With his jeweler's eye, he looked at her a moment He stepped aside and nodded to the door wide open She went inside, sat down in the kitchen Still wrapped up in that goodwill overcoat He said, don't you want to hide that in the closet She said, not just yet, but still a little cold How about I put on a pot of coffee He said, standing at the stove now with his Like a diamond And emerging Flawless In her eyes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving Is just around She asks him, is it all right if I stay? And with a voice of one afraid, past his future. He says, why don't we just take it day by day? And her overcoat is hanging in the closet. Looks like winter's coming on now. So I forgot how much I love that song. <laughs> Richard Schindel, All Wide Open from his 2016 release, Careless. Uh, um, so good. I love yeah. that. Um, and I don't know if this is one of those things you heard in your head uh, initially, but um, I love it when it has that break and the, just that vocal bit. It just like really yeah. kind of recenters you and, and mm. kind of brings you back in in a really beautiful way. Really groovy. Thank you. Thank you. No, it wasn't, um, it, again, it wasn't uh, something anticipated, something I, I thought of in advance. In fact, that's an example of a song that, uh, of an arrangement that happened by subtraction <laughs> and, and severe subtraction. Hmm. Um, there was a lot. I mean, it was like a whole rhythm and blues tune um, wow. there. And I remember listening to it and thinking to myself, this is just way too much infrastructure, too much piled on to what I'm trying to say here. And I mean, I was, I was mad. I was like, I was, I was upset because I couldn't figure out how to solve this song because what happens is, is that you get it, you get, you get attached to things that you do. You get attached to 
your guitar parts, you get attached to a drum part, you get attached to a feel, you get attached to a whole arrangement, you get attached to all the money you spent doing it. <laughs> yeah. Or, sure. <laughs> or, you, or actually, you're not attached to it. You let that go, and but you don't want to blow. You don't want to. You, you want to use it because you yeah. spent all that money, and, and and I kept thinking, what is wrong here? Why can't I get? Why can't I feel right about this song? And just and and finally, I just said, take away everything except that electric guitar part. Mm. Bah, bah, bah. It's just the three three. It's just. I think it's just two notes uh each time yeah. and then we added it and then we added things back very um carefully um and finally i got rid of the whole uh, there was an actual drum track there like a very pretty big drum track with a real drummer and and i said just give me some loopy some loopy thing mm. I just I was want wondering to... about that. It sounded maybe like yeah. a, like a loop yeah. or something. Yeah, that was Scott Petito. He came up with that. He he I said, give me some sort of lo-fi loopy thing. Just to just to kind of move it along and give it give it some give it a nice tempo and some pace. And um and I think the only thing that I think I'm playing everything there. I'm not sure. Um, maybe Scott Petito is playing the bass. I'm not. I, I can't remember. But everything else are, is just like pieces of guitar parts that I had done for that other arrangement. We like mm. took them and <laughs> cool. kind. Yeah, and then Lucy Kaplansky came in and added her beautiful oh. harmony, which just I was makes wondering me, who that was. Break, breaks my heart every time I hear it. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was a case of 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 um of subtracting of having having overdone it by quite a bit and then just saying okay basta enough, <laughs> well, enough. Gary, gary edited uh we wanted to say that he, it's very brave he says uh to show in editing your in your works in progress it's hard to let go reboot something and i think that uh that people don't understand how much harder that is than adding things <laughs> yeah. well but but actually it didn't feel brave i mean i was desperate <laughs> I was like, because I really liked this song. I really wanted to. I wanted the song to say what it says. I had no problem with anything about the way the song was, the structure of the song, the com composition of the song. But I felt like I was not doing it right in terms of the way it was um, being incarnated as a as a recording. Because that's what you're doing when you're recording for the, a song for the first time. You are making it incarnate for the first time, and so your choices you know, they matter. Um, and in that case, it just wasn't right. And it wasn't right. It wasn't right. It wasn't right. A and so it that decision to to edit did not feel brave. It felt like desperation. It felt like I didn't have any choice. And it was a huge relief when 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 I I found that um, that approach. Mm. Well, it's, it sounds like the answer was in the title of the song all along. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, exactly. And that, that did occur to me, I think. I think I, I thought to myself, this is anything but what that old version. This yeah. is anything but wide open. And so, yeah, yeah so that you're, ab you're absolutely right, Anthony. Well, Jessica says it feels perfect now. And I agree, Thank Jessica. You. Thank yeah. you, Jessica. Um, and, um, you know, given how much care you take with... Um, giving shape to these songs in recorded format, it makes sense that, you know, you're not someone churning out an album every year or anything. This is your most recent, it was in 2016. But we've had a lot of questions come in about what's coming up next. Uh, Joseph, um, who saw you at Club Passim last October in Boston, he said, or um, uh, he said, uh, considering releasing another album sometime, uh, someone else, Andrew, asked about a Cry, Cry, Cry reunion. You mentioned Lucy Kaplansky. Um, for those of you who don't know, Cry, Cry, Cry was a, a folk super group featuring Richard, Lucy Kaplansky, and Dar Williams. Um, so, um, yeah, what's is there anything in the works, either with Cry, Cry, Cry or solo material? Well, the Cry, Cry, Cry one is an easier question to answer. The answer is no. <laughs> But we did it. We had we had, we a, had reunion. a reunion tour. We had a reunion. Oh, you, yeah. I hope you didn't miss it because uh, we <laughs> had <was> one. Great. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was fun. And uh, the other question, uh, what was it? Uh, oh, a, re a new record. Let's see. Yeah, I have a whole I have a whole record's worth of songs. And 
I'm going to record them. And I just, I can't quite figure out what approach I want to take yet because I don't want to do what I did for the record that we're listening to now. Mm -hmm. um, I want to do something which is less, um, less, uh, I don't know how I say it, uh, less arranged, less ambitious, um, less expensive. <laughs> <laughs> how about a bluegrass record? <laughs> Well, yeah, one microphone. Yeah, I would love it. I would love it. Says um, the two banjo players. Yes. Yeah. More. yeah. A little biased, but, you know, Norman Blake, I mean, he got away with, I mean, some of the best songs ever, you know, just such a sparse arrangement. So I, I right. think there's something something to it. Well, I think that's going to happen. Something like that is going to happen. They're going to be more sparse, the arrangements. And some of them I'm doing at home at my at my desk. Um, I can do quite a lot at my desk. Um and by definition, in a way, they sort of have to be uh, sparse. Um, <laughs> I can only do so much. Um, so, so yeah, I got to make a record. I, I, I will make a record. And, uh, and if you're looking at a more sparse record and maybe one that you're doing closer to your home, which is in Argentina, are there players that you would pull on from there? Or, or were sure. you thinking, no, it would just be you kind of doing stuff or maybe sending it out to folks to add? On tracks yeah that's a good question um th there are players and in fact i have a a, f a friend date david ben simon who with whom i work down there who's worked with me on a couple of things um and we would work with people there i, I would like that because it's um i would like to do that and i would also like to keep working with the people i work with up here um it's it, i think it's psychologically important uh, for me, anyway, to keep those two worlds kind of fluid and talking to each other in my head. Um, and, of course, you know, they do different things. Uh, my, my friends up here who are musicians uh, play differently than my friends down there, as, as is the case with musicians everywhere. Um, my son, Martin, is also, uh, I also want to involve him, and he's, he's living down there. He's, a, he's turning into a producer cat. <laughs> Yeah. Excellent. Well, um, we have so many questions, but also so little time. We have to get to a couple, at least going, a couple more. This is going fast, stuff. you know. <laughs> Fastest hour of the week right here. Um, so, um, but I do want to mention that this album, since folks are really digging it, um, if folks want to get their hands on a physical copy and hear the audio tracks in all their full glory, um, it is available. Uh, we posted a link to a Bandcamp page where you can uh, find the album. Certainly it's available in other places like Amazon and whatnot. But um, but either way, either buy the physical CD or download the high res tracks because it sounds fantastic and even it, better yeah. when it's not going through the YouTube. So. Yeah, and I'll say that I did look on the site. I didn't see maybe a physical copy that was available through this, but that you could get the WAV files, the FLAC files, and hear it in its all of its glory because it really does sound great. I mean, the production on this is phenomenal, and I, I didn't get a chance to ask where it was recorded. Yeah, it's a good. Uh, thank you for asking that. Um, it was recorded um, at uh, by Scott Petito um, at N NRS in Saugerties, New York. And he just did an amazing job. He's a he's a great engineer, and uh, and he's a great producer as well. In fact, um, I mean, he's 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 an all around kind of he's a he's, he's a composer. He's a bass player. He's like one of these guys who does all kinds of stuff. But he's got a really good studio with really good gear, and he knows how to use it. So um, yeah, I'm I'm very happy with the way just the sonic aspect of the record. It's mm. very, very well done. It really that's not, is. That's not me. That's that's Scott. Mm. <laughs> so good. Well, and the songs are so great. And we're going to hear another one right now. Uh, this uh, next track you picked to feature is Atlas Choking. Is there oh anything you want to say about this? <laughs> oh, boy. Um, <laughs> well, you know, down in Argentina, we have a new president who's a libertarian maniac. And... Um, uh, uh, or just a maniac, <laughs> if you prefer. Um, and this song is a kind of touches on some of those themes. Um, it it's a, it's a anti objectivist. I guess it would be a considered an anti objectivist song. Um, but this one also is uh, from a musical point of view is another example of wanting to 
kind of let things go. First of all, I, I I did many tracks of the of the vocal before I was happy with before I got one I was happy with. And the one you're going to hear is me with a pretty bad case of bronchitis, hmm. which I wanted considering the um, which makes sense considering the the subject matter of the song, which is, you know, well, We're bronchitis. Now. Yeah, bronchitis. <laughs> and then and, and then the other the other thing um, is the piano. There's a piano part. The piano being played here is the piano in my dining room in Buenos Aires, which is an old German upright piano from the 1920s, I believe. And um, not in tune, but pretty close. And the guy that played it is uh, Bob Telson, who is just a f an amazing musician. He's the guy who did all the music for Gospel of Colonus mm. and uh, has written many, many great songs. And, um, and at the end of the song, First of all, the, the take you're going to hear is him doing one take. He did not do a second take. Hmm. And the end of the song, he does this deconstruction of the chord progression, which goes on for quite a while. And I just, you know, I I just let it go and I let it go. And I'm so glad we we kept it in the final version because it makes sense in terms of the song. And it's it's just it's just glorious to listen to. And I love how the song falls apart. <laughs> I love this. This is like uh, candy for us uh, music nerds. I mean, I'm going to be listening for the bronchitis throat and the out of tune piano. I'm going to be transported to his living room and I'm going to be listening to these deconstructed chords. I hope you guys are too. That's what the show is is all about. This is music Richard Schindel, Atlas Choking here on the Back Catalog Listening Party. Dead, she died in her bed at the end of a terrible illness. Her oxygen birth untethered from the earth. She drifted up into the stillness. Eleven years later, good old Hugh Brenner found himself there in the ether. Dead Iron Ram took you by the hand. He said, How does it feel to be free? Meanwhile, on the planet, the devil's still at it, making a killing, turning out addicts. Everybody everywhere, sucking in iron's air, atlas choking. Big tobacco sent flowers around, with a note and a basket of options. If you know what's good for you, hold on to these Cause everything's gonna go up, up, up The Greenspan and Stockman leading the horsemen The party was just getting started The Marlboro man rode into Japan Looked over the water to China All over the planet, the devil's still at it Making a killing, turning out at it Everybody everywhere sucking in iron's air That was choking Rational greed The national creed Will keep things smoking along Still at it, making a killing, turning out addicts. 
Everybody everywhere sucking in Iron's air At this choking At this choking At this choking Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Richard. Wow. Might be my favorite thing on the record. <laughs> oh, Richard Schindel with Atlas Choking. And even before he got to the crazy uh, piano stuff at the end, uh, just uh, that whole instrumental bit. And then the violin mm -hmm. comes and the mandolin. And it just. Oh, and did I hear a pedal steel guitar in there too? Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. I kind of lost my mind on that one. Um, <laughs> not at all. That yeah. Awesome. The, the only direction I gave Bob was that in the solo prior to the pedal steel and all that stuff coming in there, I, I said, just give me a little saloon. Mm. Yeah. You know, just, just give me a little saloon. And, <laughs> he did. and he did. And, and I'm telling you, that was one take. He didn't do it twice. Wow. Um, and then that other stuff at the end, there's a, there's a pedal steel, there's a mandolin, there's some sort of, I don't know if it's like a little bell or something. Um, it's just, there's a lot of stuff there. I'm, I'm not sure if if I should have just left it. I'm listening now, I'm thinking maybe I should have just let the piano do all that. But yeah, I know, think it, it's perfect. The I way think it added to the whole thing. Um, Doombird says, "I think the merry-go-round just broke <laughs> down." You know, yeah. and, exactly. Like, One house yeah, kind yeah. of vibe. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. that, that really brought it together. In fact. <laughs> I, I had myself on mute, but my my very vocal cat started going crazy right in that last section. She was just like, right. what's Good. happening? That's, that's the reaction I want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and uh, it looks like folks are loving it. Uh, Paviel gives the starry eyes um, and uh, Karen and Christy and... Um, and then uh, Matt says, a little saloon. I love it. I'll never listen to that song in the same way again. So many new layers. And that is what wow. the Bat Catalog listening party is all about, is uh, <laughs> getting to f hear the stories behind the songs and how they're recorded and um, and uh, us all listen to it together with, with fresh ears. And um, I do want to take this moment to say that if... Uh, uh, you are new to the Bat Catalog listening party. We do do this every Friday. This is our 200th episode. Yay. And uh, we've had many of the artists that Richard mentioned have been on the show, uh, like Lucy Kaplansky and Dar Williams and John Gorka. And uh, you can listen to past episodes at BatCatalogListeningParty.com, or, or you can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check them out there. Um, but we want to thank all our Patreon supporters. These are the folks who have supported this show and kept it going for 200 episodes. 200 episodes. Thank what? you. Yeah. Uh, Penny, Anna, Linda, Bevan, Connie, Vaughn, Alan, Chris, Alex, Becky, Peggy, Joe, Jim, Beverly, John, Fred, Tim, Sarah, David, Jocelyn, Matt, Steve, Mark, Homestead, Pick and Parlor, Severin, Lynn, Mary, Many Tracks, Nikki, Joni, David, CJ, Wiley, Stephanie, Christy, and maybe you. If you would like to uh, support the Back Catalog Listening Party, we're actually doing a little after party today to celebrate our 200th episode. Um, and if you want to get invited to such things, um, uh, you can sign up for our Patreon and support the show that way. But mainly... We're glad that you're here with us today, uh, enjoying this music with us and uh, getting to engage with Richard. We still have one song we're going to squeeze in. Yes. If, if you're willing to to go a little over, Richard, because we oh, want to make sure we get to the well, okay. what, what is What is the song? 
Um, well, uh, it's going to be satellites. And um, I just have one thing I want to mention before we get to it. And that is that um, we have a bunch of folks who are tuned in from the UK and you are playing over there, I believe, right? Uh, coming up. So if folks want to check out those tour dates or keep in touch with you and find out when you're next playing in North America, uh, where can they, what's the best way to do that? Should they follow you on Facebook or subscribe to your sub stack? Uh, Facebook or my sub stack. You, um, just, if you just Google Richard Schindel and sub stack, you'll, you'll be, you'll be there. And um, uh, one of these days I'll have a new webpage, uh, you know, a dot com type thing. Um, my previous webpage got, um, got uh, occupied. Yeah, there's Bye. a different Richard Schindel out there that's not yeah, you. It's and not me. Yeah, I saw that. It's, and, it's uh, really, it's really, it's really awful, and um, it uh, somebody scarfed it up, and they're nasty people, and they won't give it back to me. But, but I did uh, recently acquire a new domain name, and so, so you know what, they can do whatever they want. Um, <laughs> and, but, but, but in the meantime, there is there is Facebook, and there is my um substack page which uh i encourage people to to become uh subscribers to um i do i do a thing where i send out um uh send out something every week and it could be a poem it could be a song or a piece of a song it could be a prose um it could be a little little bit of photography it could, you know it's just it's just me doing whatever i want so. <laughs> Well, I support you doing whatever you want. I uh, am subscribed and it's yes. fun to see what you what you share with the world. So um, and I'll make sure to put that in our comments here. And I just also want to say that if you're listening to this after the fact, we do have show notes up at backcataloglisteningparty.com slash 200, or at least we'll have them up here in a couple of days. But I'll have links to all of this, the, his Substack and his Facebook page um, and uh, some of the artists and other people that are featured on this album. And uh, both Anna and Joni and some other folks have said how much they enjoy um, uh, subscribing to the Substack and such. So um, you can check it out uh, there. And it looks like Matt Winters is going to be at your show in, in Kings Heath. So um, excellent. Sure, um, Matt. <laughs> so, uh, well, we are going to uh, get to this last song, uh, which is Satellite. Uh, is there anything you want to say about this one? Is, is, would it be possible to do Before You Go? Oh, we it too absolutely. Yeah. Okay, let's do that one instead. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like we have all this, you know, for for your cat's sake. I want. I want. <laughs> you hear her? She's like, what's yeah, happening? I want. I want to. I want to play a song which is going to calm your cat down. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so, great. So this is a song. This is a love song, and it's. Um, I have an idea of the person who's speaking in the song, and I have an idea of. The person that's being addressed. <laughs> but I get to it soon, right? We just heard the cat, cat right? Yeah. Um, but you know, but but I don't. I'm not going to say because I'd rather it just be a love song. That's all. That's that's all you need to say. And it's, I think it's going to be a great way uh, to close out our hour. This is Richard Schindel. Before you go, here on the back catalog listening party. Just a word before you go Just a few things you should know Come and sit here by my side Love, how I wish that you could stay There can be no other way I must send you on your own Love, here's a place and here's a name Love, she will hold you in her arms And show you who you are Love, you'll be hungry, you'll be weak You'll be tempted, you'll be free To turn away from me Love Dressed in rags and far from home You will wander all alone You will wonder where I am 
love, you will laugh and you will cry. Love, you will live and you will die, but only for a while. There's a world that you must bear. Waiting for you there to lead them from the night to bring them to the light. Richard Schindel with Before You Go from his 2016 album, Careless, which we have been revisiting with Richard today here on the Back Catalog Listening Party. And the song did its trick, Richard, uh, that love song, my cat really mellowed out during that. <laughs> Excellent. During that <laughs> yeah, one wants to be useful. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was a beautiful way to end this this time. And uh, I forget who it was now in the comments, but said the hour could have been twice as long. Yeah. We, we could have spent so much. I this could, has been... I could stay here all day. Wonderful. Yeah, us too. Well, um, yeah, so, so great. And I have to, I just have one question I have to ask, which is, uh, Richard, I think I first heard that song on a collection that Signature Sounds put out called like a wintertime kind of solstice collection. And it was a very, it was just like you and an electric guitar as, as what I remember. Um, So, uh, so it was in your pocket for a while before you recorded this version, right? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. It was recorded. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think it was they asked me to record something in, in that was seasonal in some way or I don't, I don't know what it was. And um, uh, and then I never put it on a record. I don't know why. But uh, for this one, I made some changes to it. It's a little different. This version is, has some especially the ending. Again, mm -hmm. I, I might have done a little bit of um, snip, snip, copy, paste at the end. And... <laughs> I should, I should. I shouldn't say these things. No, no this way. is exactly where you should say these Who things. didn't have an editor? I mean, editing right. yeah. is is such part of the process. So right? that's I love. I, my, one of my personal favorite things to hear about is like how yeah. you right. what you choose to leave and what you choose to take out. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was, um, and I'm happy. I'm happy with the way it, um, with, with the way that one turned out. Um, and I'm especially happy. You want to know my my what I love the most about that song? Two things is Lucy's Harmony mm -hmm. and the Mellotron. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not enough Mellotron. <laughs> There's not right. enough Mellotron in the world. <laughs> um, well, I will say there was not enough time to, to get to all the questions or the music that we wanted to get I, to today. I want to say a special thanks to everybody who tuned in today because yeah. just seeing all those questions and comments, Richard, hopefully you can go back and read through all of them. People I are will. just loving it. They're clearly um, just 
just want to hear more and more from you. Um, and uh, like we mentioned earlier, if you want to hear more and more um, from Richard, if you're not already, you should jump on his Substack where you'll get something more from him every week. Um, there's a link in the comments, and, and who we'll knows put a link what in our it'll be. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you liked the episode, um, uh, like it on YouTube, uh, direct more bots uh, to Richard Schindel. Um, and also you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. I know uh, someone mentioned that they had done just that. And um, because we do do this every Friday, not with Richard Schindel every week, sadly, but with other great artists uh, revisiting different kinds of records. So um, we hope that we'll see you back for episode 201. And <laughs> <That's right>. uh, <laughs> and yeah, so fun to to get not only an insight into the songs, but into the scene that that formed the the artists that we have. So it was great to talk about Jack Hardy right. and all these other folks. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. and thanks. Thanks to both of you. Thanks for inviting me. I really appreciate it. And um, I'm, I, I don't do a lot of these, as you know. <laughs> and, Gotta uh, tease you out. We're honored that you <laughs> yeah. would do this. So us. thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Mother Banjo. Thank you, Ellen. <laughs> and and uh, and it's been it's been it's been great fun. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you all for being here. Um, and yes. thank you for 200 episodes, all of you. Yes, because... a special thank you to everybody who's made this possible. Here's to the next 200, everybody. Mm -hmm. Until next time. Cheers. Have a great week, everybody. Have a great week. Carrot juice. <laughs>